I to uh, discuss this book of Manjit Kumar called Quantum, and um, it's uh, discusses the debate between Einstein and Bohr about the nature of reality. <coughs> With a high recommendation, very good book. Um, I take some quotes of it and some uh, put some reflections on that from an anarchist, atheist and determinist perspective. <clears throat> the first one, a scientist that get mentioned that uh, I, uh, I find worth uh, noting here is Ludwig Boltzmann. Because Ludwig Boltzmann was the son of a tax collector and he has been plagued, he had been plagued by ill health for a long time. He had asthma and migraines and poor eyesight and angina. But the worst of all was his depressions. He suffered from depressions and he also committed suicide uh, while on a holiday in Duino. <clears throat> now, this is very speculative. What I was thinking is that if you're the son of a tax collector and you approve of what your father was doing, uh, because it gave you, provided you with the shelter and the food and everything, and you, you naturally uh, would consider that good thing. Uh, <clears throat> then you have a problem if you gonna pursue physics and look for general uh, universal principles of the behavior of uh, things in nature. So you say I have one atom and I have another atom, and I like to uh, formulate one set of principles that explains both uh, their behaviors then it is very weird if there are two people and they have to obey different principles because your father can tax someone else but someone else cannot tax your father so there are different principles and if you're not aware of that uh, and you approve a bit of it subconsciously I, I think like once again highly speculative but it might cause ill health because you have this this twist in you at the one hand you're looking for general principles and the other hand you're you're afraid to to go there <clears throat> um, then it moves on to uh, Einstein of course Einstein became religious as a kid after he saw Jews being discriminated against on his school and he even went as far as singing religious songs and stopped eating pork but then after reading one science book after another, he concluded that much of the Bible could not be true. This unleashed what he called, and it's a quote, a fanatic three thinking coupled with the impression that youth is intentionally being, being deceived by the state through lies. It was a crushing impression, end of quote. And the author says it sowed the seeds of a lifelong suspicion of every kind of authority. Uh, Although, of course, Einstein in the end thought that you could prevent disaster from nuclear weapons by putting them under uh, the umbrella of an even bigger authority, the United Nations. Um, so, yeah, combating one authority with another authority might not be uh, a good principled approach. Um, Einstein's family went to Italy when he was at school in, uh, in Munich and for the sake of his parents, he pretended that everything was okay in Munich, but he was increasingly troubled by the thought of compulsory military service. So that caused him eventually to renounce his uh, German nationality, so he would no longer uh, run the risk of being called in up for service. Uh, service uh, yeah, for a killing duty. <coughs> and. Um, after five years of being stateless, Einstein acquired Swiss citizenship. Now, in Switzerland he was also called in for military service, but um, of course the risk of going to war there is not so, so big, and in the end he was um, turned down anyway because of sweaty feet or something. <clears throat> uh, he had a bit of trouble finding a job after his uh, education because he, he was a, f a bit of a rebel at school, and and he blamed the trouble he had for uh, with getting a job on the bad recommendations he got from his teacher from that school <clears throat> and he needed some help of I think his father and a friend to get uh, the job of a patent clerk in Switzerland 
uh, and he was uh, he became a technical expert third class and it's a funny thing he referred to this job as a respectable federal ink pisser this is a, a nice uh, cynical uh, description there Einstein uh, very early already made several contributions to physics and the most radical was the notion that light was quantized uh, it consisted of packets it was not a uh, wave uh, phenomena alone it was uh, uh, discrete packets of light and uh, already Max Planck uh, found out that the emission of energy uh, or, or the, the emission and absorption of uh, uh, energy happened in quantized form when light hit a metal surface and that was generally accepted but the idea that light itself consisted of quantums was uh, considered ridiculous and that could be seen from his uh, when Einstein was approved uh, appointed to a member of the Prussian Academy of Sciences they uh, said the following in sum it can be said that among the important problems which are so abundant in modern modern physics there is hardly one in which Einstein did not take a position in a remarkable manner that he might sometimes have overshot the target in his uh, speculations as for example in the light quantum hypothesis should not be counted against him too much because without taking risk from time to time it is impossible even in the most exact natural science to in introduce real innovations. Now of course it's uh, interesting later that, uh, that within two years after Millikan's experiments uh, it was very difficult to to deny that he, uh, Einstein was actually right there and light was a quantized phenomenon. <coughs> now um, Einstein had a very productive year in the year 1905 he read, uh, wrote a lot of papers and one of them was on Brownian motion and that basically proved the existence of atoms because many still doubted the existence of atoms at, the, at that time and uh, you had a pollen grain suspended in water uh, if you looked at it under a microscope you saw the pollen grain jumping around uh, in erratic movements which called Brownian motion and many thought that that was a sign of life already in the pollen that uh, life movement it was jumping around and so uh, that was a typical thing about life and you have for example also the organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry and I think you still have that today uh, that is a whole different branch because it was thought that that organic matter and inorganic matter were two different kinds of matter and they obeyed different principles and they were kind of two two laws of nature and uh, later it was discovered that not just pollen grain suspended in water but also obviously completely dead material small particles in in uh, s uh, water suspended in water would show this brownie motion and the explanation Einstein gave was that um, more atoms bumped into it from one side than from the other and that for very light particles that could explain why it uh, showed these motions <clears throat> now there were regular conferences for physicists uh, they called the Solvay conferences and they were organized by a very rich uh, industrial who did this on uh, let all renowned physicists come together on his expense in Brussels and Einstein declined to go to the fourth Solvay conference because Germans were excluded by the Belgian government um, the Belgian government was uh, still angry because the German government invaded them in, or the territory which they considered theirs in the First World War and they wouldn't leave uh, let any Germans because of that reason into uh, Belgium and Einstein thought that was nonsense and he wrote to Lorenz, the, the uh, physicist uh, uh, who was the paternoster of this whole uh, um, thing uh, nor should individuals be held responsible for the government of the country they happen to belong to and of course this is a yeah it's a very anarchistic um, uh, remark uh, of Einstein here now this is uh, for the first part second part 
I'm going to tell you something about uh, quantum mechanics, a little more short introduction and some of the follow-up discussion.